Hey guys, this is going to be a quick video to show you how to set up server-side pagination for the list widget. And I'm going to show you how to set up server-side pagination for the list widget using a database and also an API. So we'll be seeing how to do both in today's video. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. So right here, I have a blank application. And the first thing I'll need to do is connect this application to a database. So let's do that by clicking on the plus icon for data source, or I can use the keyboard shortcut command shift plus to go create a new data source. All right, so I'll be using the user's data source, which is part of the sample database that's provided out of the box on AppSmith. So let's go ahead to do that. And uh, let's create a new query to get users. So I'm going to call this get users. All right. And it's going to be a simple select query that grabs a bunch of users from the database. So this looks good. So I can go ahead to run this. And here we have a bunch of users coming back from the database. Now we can actually go display this information in a list widget because we have an array of user data coming back, as you can see from the JSON view. So let's go display this in a list widget. So let's bring in a list widget. All right, this looks good, all right? So here we have a nice list widget, which can be used to display all of that user information. So we can do a binding here to bring that data from the query into the widget by writing get users the data. And here we have all of that user data shown up on the list widget. So we can actually go update this a bit. So we can go display the user's image, for example. And here we have a bunch of users being shown up on the list widget. The only problem right now is that we don't have server side pagination set up. So let's go ahead to fix that. So taking a look at the properties of the list widget, we have this icon or the toggle switch for server side pagination. So I'm just going to turn this on and then we also have an event we need to set up, and that's the event for on-page change. So whenever the page changes, we want to go ahead to re-execute the get users query. And what we need to do now is set up the get users query to be able to handle pagination from the list widget. So to get back to the get users query, you can use the UI by going through the Explorer, but I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut Control or Command P and search for get users and here we are on the get users query. So we need to update this query a bit to be able to add pagination because we've already done the setup on the list widget. Now we have to set up the query a little bit. So the first thing I'll be doing is making sure that the limit is actually based on the page size from the list widget. So this is going to be list one dot page size, page size. And if I go turn off prepared statement, you can see that we have a limit of four right now. Because this is Postgres, we need to set up some offset. So let's go ahead to do that. This is offset, all right. And for the offset, we need to make a calculation based on the page number and also on the page size. So this is going to be the list page number minus one multiplied with the list page size and here we have a number that evaluates to zero because we're actually on page one. So if we go ahead to go change the page, for example, so I can change the page, for example, to page two, you can see we have a bunch of fresh users displayed on the page. And if we head back to the query, for example, you can see now that we have the offset set to four. So this calculation actually does all of the logic of handling pagination, which is actually quite straightforward. Heading back to the page, we can also go set up pagination using an API. So I promise I'll be showing you how to set up pagination using a database and also an API. Let's go ahead to do the same for an API. So I have this API right here, which is the mock AppSmith API. So I'm just going to go create an API using command shift plus, or you could also go use the UI. So let's go create a blank API and I'm going to call this get users two. All right, that's the get users two. So we're going to be using the mock API we have right here on AppSmith. So this is going to be mock dash API dot AppSmith dot com for slash users. All right, this looks good. So I can go ahead to run this and taking a look at the response, I actually have a bunch of users 
in the user's array right here. So let's take this and display it in a list and we'll need to also come back to set up pagination. But before we leave here, taking a look at the next URL, you see that we actually have information to paginate this API right here. So this means we'll need to pass in a page number and also a page size. So let's go ahead to do this. I'm just going to head back to the canvas. Let's go bring in a new list widget. All right, so I'm going to place this right here. All right, and let's expand this a bit. So we have a nice list here. And similarly, we need to bind this with the data coming from the get users to API. So this is going to be get users to dot data. And here we have all of the user information in the users key. So this will be dot users. All right, and this looks good. So let's go ahead to set this up a bit because each user has an avatar. So we can actually display the avatar and this looks good. All right, so we're able to display all of the user's information from the API, but we also need to set up server-side pagination. And to do that, we need to go turn on server-side pagination for list two and make sure that whenever the page changes, we go execute the get users to query. All right, this looks good. So let's jump back to the API, which is the get users to API and configure pagination by passing in a page number, which as you already guessed, will be the page number of the second list widget, which is list two. So this will be list two dot page number. And lastly, we need to pass up a page size. So this is going to be list two dot page size, and we're good to go. So we can head back to the um, list widgets and go page through it. So we can go select a new page and you can see we have a bunch of new um, users showing up on the second list and we can go select a new page and we have new users showing up. So this is how easy it is to set up server-side pagination, both for databases and APIs using the list widget. Now, you might want to find out more about using the list widget. So we made a video right here that talks about how to use the list widget and how to configure it. We went in depth in that video. So go check it out and the links will be in the description below. Or you may want to display your information in a different widget which the table widget would also be suitable. So we made a video here on using the table widget. The links will be in the description below so you can go check it out too. All right, that'll be all for today's video. Please let us know your thoughts on the list widget and I'm going to see you in the next video. All right, that'll be all for today. Take care, bye-bye.